sometimes you see a video and you're just like, that's cool. I want to rebuild it. You know, if I, if I saw like a cool car and I wanted to build a model of it, it's kind of a way to, you know, to think that models, that car is cool. And that's what I'm going to do here. So this is a video, uh, Matt Parker, stand up maths. And there was a Casio trick where if you enter, I think this is, what was it? 11 to the sixth power divided by 13 gives you some fraction times pi. And he's like trying to figure out why that happens. And, and it, but the cool thing is this idea of how a calculator can take uh, a decimal number and represent it as a fraction. And the, the idea here is if I take, well, if he takes uh, this zero to one, get the decimal number, it's the, just cut off the decimal part and that take that decimal part you can kind of find a fraction to represent it with this trick. Let me switch over to the paper to show you the, the trick, and then we're gonna do it in Python. He said he did it in Python. I wanna do it in Python uh, because, you know, why not? Okay, so it turns out that if you have uh, a number, let's say, on a number line, and this is zero and this is one, and I have some decimal number and I wanna represent it as a fraction somewhere in between here, I can write this as zero over one and this as one over one. And we we can calculate what's called the median. I've never heard of this before, so mediant. If I take the numerators and add them together and the denominators to add them together, I get zero plus one over one plus one equals one half. And so it's somewhere in the middle, but I get the fraction one half. What I can do is then say, well, is, is my number greater than one half or less than one half? And if it's less than one half, then I can take these two numbers and find the median. So if I did that, I would get uh, zero plus one over one plus two or one third. And so that would be, I guess, somewhere right there. And then I can do the same thing. Is it is if it's greater than one third, then I'm going to take, all right, this is one third. Then I'll take these two numbers and add them together. Or I'm not adding them together because I'm not doing it right. I get one plus one over three plus two is two fifths. And that would be somewhere in there. And I can keep on doing that until I get uh, a, no, a fraction that's very close to my number. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, you know, the thing I'm really worried, I'm, I'm curious about is, what do these numbers look like? I'm just going to go ahead and what I want to do is to make a program just as a practice warm-up. Uh, always take the higher number and plot numerator versus denominator as this goes on. I don't. I just want to see what it looks like. So let's do this for a certain number of things in Python. Uh, and then we're going to take a decimal number. I guess I could take this 11 to the 6 divided by 13 uh, and just re express that as a as a number and plus a fraction, n over d, approximately. That's what I want to do. This is the goal. I have no idea what I'm doing. I might make some mistakes. But mistakes were made to be happened, right? Is that even a thing? Can I say that? OK, let's switch to the computer. I am using, one of the things I like to do is I don't use real Python. I don't know if you've seen that before. but this is web v python and in this case we're not doing any v stuff any visual stuff we could do 3d me 3d animations but i like this because it's online um it's easy to share it's easy for other people to edit so if you do the same thing in python it'll probably work it it's not real python okay that's one to let you know okay let's just let's just get to it i'm gonna i'm gonna start off i'm gonna make a graph that's what i want to do I want to make a graph of numerator versus denominator as I find this median and just plot some points. So let's just make a graph g1 equals graph. Uh, making a graph in vPython is like super easy. I like it. Let's just put x title is the numerator, uh, y title is the denominator, and then here I do need to put the width as let's put 400 and the height is 200, just so it makes a, a nice size graph. And I'm not gonna make a line, I'm gonna make dots. So F1 equals G dots, and let's make those dots blue, color equals color dot blue. 
Now I need a, a counter because I need to, to determine how many times I'm going to do this. I'm going to call that in. I mean, no, I'm going to call it C. I would normally call it in, but uh, I'm going to use in for the numerator. And the C max will be, let's try 100. Let's just try 100 see what happens. And I, uh, I'm going to need, an, I'm going to need, I'm trying to think, do I need three numerators and three denominators? Yeah, let's do three. So N1 is the numerator for the left side, and that's going to be zero. N2 is the other side, one. And then D1 is one. D2 is one. Right, zero over one and one over one. Those are my two starting numbers. And then I'm gonna, oh, I should call this uh, three. And then I'll call the middle one N2, D2. Um, I'm trying to think, should I go ahead and plot? Let's, let's do this. While C is less than C max, and uh, C equals C plus one. Right, if I don't increment my counter, it's never gonna end and that's gonna be bad. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is to calculate that, that median. So let's calculate the median. N2 is gonna be N1 plus N3. D2 is N... No, D1 plus D3. All right, so I'm taking the, the numerators and adding them together. I'm taking the denominators and adding them together and I get my middle point. And I wanna plot that. So we'll plot uh, f1 dot plot uh, d2 n2. Now I need to pick. I want to take the higher the higher one. So I'm just going to set d1 to d2, n1 to n2. So I'm going to shift my new my new things up. I think that should work. D1 equals d2, n1 equals n2. I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> Let's just see. Run it. No, something happened. Can't. Okay. Well, I can't find the variable graph. That's not a bad mistake. I can fix that. Oh, so it went. It just went up and up and up. Okay. Well, that's not that interesting. Let's just look at it in a smaller scale. C max is 10. They're really close together. Okay. So these are all my fractions. I guess they're, I'm surprised that they're evenly spaced. Well, I guess they would be, right? Because I'm talking about one fifth, two fifth, three fifth, all the, the, the possible fractions. Okay. That wasn't that interesting. Let's not graph. Let's use the same method. And I'm going to start off with the number. I'm going to use this x equals. Let's just try something simple. X equals uh, 3.213243. I'm just typing. There's my number. And the first thing I need to do is to get just the 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 integer part of that. And and this is where we can use div and mod, right? So div, and I get the two confused. Div is division, where you forget the remainder, and mod is just the remainder. So print div x, I want to divide that by one. x divided by one. And the remainder would be the 0.23 whatever, I'm going to throw that away. And print mod x, it's actually one, equals x, I'll put it, mod is percent in Python, one. And this will just give me the leftover part. I think this should work. Yeah, so now I have the numerator, that's the part I wanted, and the decimal part. So let's call those two things. Uh, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna, I just did that to check. X in, that's the number, I guess you call that int, x int is x divided by one, x decimal is 
x mod 1. So <clears throat> I want to now take that x decimal and express that as a fraction. That's important. I'm going to use the same method, right? I'm going to start with my two endpoints of 0 and 1, and I want to find the number between them, which is going to be 1 half. And then I want to say, okay, is my x decimal greater than 1 half? Then I'm going to move in 1 to in 2. If it's less than it, I'm going to move in 3 to in 2. Does that make sense? I'm not going to plot it. So here I calculate d2 in 2. I can say if um, x decimal is greater than into d2, the fraction, right? If that's the case, then I want to take my n1 d1 and move to n2 d2. Then n1 equals n2, d1 equals d2. Else, then the number is smaller. I guess it could be equal to. What if it's equal to? Hmm. Well, I guess it'll just it'll just it'll do the else. Else, I will do n three equals n two, d three equals d two, and then I'm going to increment by one. And so this should flip flop back and forth. Um, I guess I could still plot that. Let's let's try that. Let's try plotting f1 dot plot d2 n2. Let's just see what happens. And let's print it. Print x equals. I said it was going to be x int. And then plus the fraction, which would be n2 divided by d2. I feel like this is going to be a disaster. So there it goes. It's always, okay, well, that's kind of cool. It's... And if I get that is my number, let's see if that actually works. Let's print x, x, I think this is working. x equals x int plus n2 divided by d2. And then let's print x. So now we have it three ways. So that, that, I did it. That worked, All right? So I only did it for 10 loops. And I still got, this is the number I started with. This is the number I represented as, which is if you switch that back to a decimal, you get that. That's pretty good. Let's try just, I should save this. Median make fraction. Does that make sense? I'm going to give you a link to the code down below. I'm, I'm surprised that this actually worked as fast as it did because usually I make some pretty dumb mistakes. I don't want to plot this because the plot doesn't really help me very much. Uh, but I can increase C max to 100. And let's see what happens. Now, this is kind of weird, right? Uh, this decimal form format up here, this fraction, but it's still a, an integer because that's, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, you know, you could you could format this in a better way, but this was a proof of concept and it does indeed work. Now, one of the things with uh, WebVPython, it only displays, what, six digits or something like that. Uh, so you can get it to display more, but I can't remember how to do that. If you went to real Python, it should work fine too. Uh, I guess we could try that if you want. You could try just copying this code. Don't put the graph in there. Uh, copying the code and put it in real Python, uh, Google Colab would be a great one. I'm not going to do that because I want to log into Google Colab. But you could copy that code, put it in Google Colab without the plotting, and see if it works that way too.
Okay, so I'll put a link to uh, Matt Parker's video down below. I'll put a link to my code down below, and that was kind of fun. You know, it it shows you also the power of Python. I can come up with a simple idea and implement it without getting too crazy. And that's why it's important to understand uh, something like Python so you can kind of play around with your ideas and they don't have to be the best code. It doesn't have to be anything like that. You just want to try these ideas and this one does indeed work. It's kind of cool.